Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whenever you hear this message, I pray that you're poised to receive, to accept, and to respond to words of wisdom. Ashe. Um, today belongs to Egbe and to Ogun, and consequently, uh, we did our morning work, uh, rituals, and we received our our lessons and insights from the deities, and I really love today's lesson, and I want to share it with you with the hopes and the intent to help you to get a better sense of yourself and inform the way in which you participate and engage with the broader community. Today, Egbe and Ogun revealed to us the contradictory nature of our need for freedom and how in some aspects of your life, you need a lot of latitude. You need, you need to be able to move without any constraints. But then there's other aspects of your life where too much freedom to choose is a burden and you need someone to just tell you what to do, right? And so I thought about this and I came up with an analogy that I think will be helpful for you. You may need to be free to choose uh, where you do your grocery shopping, right? You need to be able to get your produce from one place and you need to get your meat and poultry from another place. And then you get your housewares from another place. But that freedom, to, it becomes a burden if you then have to decide when you're going to make which meals. You need somebody else to say, make poultry on Mondays, fish on Tuesdays, meat on Thursdays, vegetarian on Friday. You're right. You need someone else to tell you that in order for it not to be a burden. Doing both is overwhelming, right? This is just an example for you to understand that there are some aspects of life where you need to be freedom. You need to have freedom in other aspects of life where you really need someone to take the lead for you. And it pertains to us within the practice of Orisha lifestyle because there are aspects of our spiritual practice that we need to be free to choose. We need a lot of latitude to make our decisions. But then there's other aspects wherein, <clears throat> excuse me, we need it to be more, let's say, didactic, as they say. And when you turn to the tradition and you're looking for this guidance or you're looking for this freedom, it can be uh, really contradictory because you're looking in one place and, and you're expecting freedom and you get all these constraints and you're looking for another place and you want all this instruction and you're getting all this openness. Well, it's like it could be anything you want it to be, you know, and it gets confusing. You know, it gets really confusing. You say, well, what what tradition is this that I'm practicing? Are there rules or are there not? Is there freedom or is there not? Right. And so <clears throat> it reminds me of a, a of a, an anecdotal story that I heard once. And I, and I hope that this helps to give you some insight. Once upon a time, there was a temple and the resident priest was going out of town. So he invited another priest to come and substitute for him. The priest is there. He's about to start the ceremonies. And then someone says, wait, you can't start right now. Says, OK, why not? So look at the seating arrangement. You got women sitting on the men's side. That'll never do. He says, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that that was a taboo here. Ladies, please rearrange your seats. Go and sit on the women's side. Someone else stood up and said, no, 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 no. That's not the way it goes here. Our tradition is that the we sit man, woman, man, woman, man, woman. It's supposed to be interspersed. He said, oh, I, I have never heard of that configuration before. All right, let's have everybody just start to, you know, and then someone else stood up and said, hey, don't waste your time. That's not the way it goes. That's not the way it goes. The tradition in this temple is that everybody gets to pick where they want to sit. He, the priest is now like baffled. He said, I don't know what, because what, everybody's arguing back and forth. You've got different factions are raising up and they're shouting. He says, okay, time out. Let, let me just take folks out one by one, two by two. He goes out into the hall. He starts interviewing the people one by one, two by two. Everybody's got receipts. Everybody's got history. Everybody's got sacred text. They can all substantiate the reason why they say what they say. After about an hour, the visiting priest is totally confused. He doesn't know what to do. He comes back in and says as much. Hey, I want to do the right thing by y'all, but I don't know where to start. 
I, I can't tell. The, is the tradition that the women sit on one side and the men sit on the other? Is the tradition that the men and women sit interspersed? Is it that people can pick and sit wherever they want to sit? I can't tell. Finally, someone stood up all the way in the back and says, let me help you out. Actually, everybody is right, but they left out a key part. Yes, the tradition is that women sit on one side and men on the other, but then that's not the tradition. Yes, the tradition is that we sit in our space, interspersed men, woman, man, woman, but then at the same time, it's not the tradition. And yes, it's true that the tradition is that people can sit wherever they want, but also that is not true. Because in truth, our authentic tradition is to argue about the tradition. And everybody laughed. Ah, you know, sorry, we, we, we should have said that from the start. And in many ways, that is indicative of Yoruba culture, Orisha tradition. On a certain level, the tradition is to argue about the tradition. On a certain level, it is a, a, a particular kind of a democratic process wherein every single kingdom is autonomous. And every single kingdom has their own structure, their own set up their own hierarchy, their own set of rules. But they all recognize one another as legitimate and then they get together and they have to argue about seniority, they have to argue about process, they have to argue about sequence. Everything is subject to argument. That is part of what makes the culture what it is. Okay. Now, for you as an African American, that can be crazy making. Right? It can be crazy making. But you've got to accept it for what it is. But the only way that you're going to be able to accept it and not just get washed away and not just be in a state of perpetual confusion is that you got to get clear about what it is that you need and what aspects of your practice and of your life do you need to have things ironed out in explicit, non-negotiable, definitive terms. What is it that you really need to know? What is it that you need to be doing? What goals are you are trying to accomplish? This is not negotiable. I need this to happen and that cannot happen. What is it? Because that's going to help you determine who can help you. And in what areas do you need total freedom? I need to be free to move. When it comes to this aspect of life and that aspect of life, I need total freedom. I don't need anybody trying to restrain me or constrain me in any way, shape, or form. That will also help you get clear because there may be some areas where you need instruction and direct explicit um, uh, mandates that you're not going to find anywhere in the tradition. And there may be some areas where you need total freedom that you're not going to find that anywhere in the tradition. The kind of freedom you're talking about? No, no, no. That's, that doesn't exist. You need to be clear about that. That requires self-discovery, though. That requires a very well-defined set of goals for your life. Those are the, the parts of it that nobody can tell you. Okay? And so in order for this tradition to work for you, you've got to work for yourself first. And I want to advise you not to overcommit until you get those things sorted out. Don't overcommit to anything or anybody until you have a very clear understanding of where you need liberty and where you need structure. Okay? This is a quintessential lesson for leaders. If you understand where I'm coming from and you are very attuned to the fact that you have sometimes contradictory needs, then I want you to slow yourself down and make sure that you can define those needs so that you can be more strategic and more precise about who you choose to work with and in what capacity. All of this, of course, 
is so that we can use positive influence to improve the world. If that interests you, if that resonates with your commitment, then I want you to find out how Oloye or Bafemi or and the Orisha Lifestyle Academy can help you take your practice and your life to the highest level possible. Visit me at obafemio.com or orishalifestyle.com and let's start working together to help you live the medicine that will heal your life and heal the lives of those who you are destined to serve. I look forward to working with you. Bye for now. Odabo.